skittered along a red scrub board of a road for eight hours today on the drive from Monrovia to the land of the Loma people in northern Liberia. As the crow flies, it isn't much more than 100 miles. Unfortunately, I wasn't flying with the crows. Along the way, beautiful children, as black as can be, towed the road and then disappeared in our dust. Despite the road, I caught some sleep to add to the three hours I got last night. Dennis drove us up today. He is a man in motion, combining joy with a tireless passion for the gospel. A pastor of pastors, a mentor of men. The Lord has used him to lead a church planting movement called Christian Revival Churches, which has grown from seven churches to 62 in three years, plus a couple dozen preaching points, the gospel vanguard of this frontline force. Roland is here too. He and Dennis make a great team. Dennis is the preacher, Roland is the well driller, a combination of fire and water. Before we reached Konya, Winston, one of Dennis's evangelists, got some snacks for us. He was excited about these bamboo worms which he likes raw and wriggling. You love it. Yeah. But in deference to his less enthusiastic guests, mm -hmm. it wouldn't kill you. No. <laughs> he waited to eat them fried when we got here. Um, tastes like chicken. Aha, you see that? <laughs> they really aren't that bad except for the head, which was kind of pokey, which I spit out when no one was looking. It's a bum worm. <laughs> okay. One. Besides introducing me to fried bamboo worms, Winston also introduced me to a proper Liberian handshake. I'm half Liberian. But I still need to work on the snap. <laughs> Konya is actually where Dennis grew up. God is using him mightily to reach his own people, the Loma, along with other tribes. To him, Konya holds many emotions. His house was destroyed in the war, and beyond memories, the foundation is all that remains. Nearby is the place where his father was beheaded and his brother shot in the back by soldiers, hideous men who could kill while they laughed. And took a knife and just cut his head up. The story of Malawu is really unbelievable. Malawu was the mecca of spirit worship in all of Liberia. The mountaintop town was founded by a witch long ago, and such demon powers dwelled here that even presidents of Liberia came here to seek special powers and curses against their enemies. Animal and even human sacrifices were offered here. If there was ever a gate to hell, Malawu was that gate. It was literally considered sacred ground. And so in the debauched worship of the devil, shoes had to be removed and women had to remove their blouses before entering the gates to the town. It was a place of unspeakable evil and violent darkness. But about two years ago, a man from Malawu came down from this mountain, heard the gospel, and believed on Jesus. He and Dennis and the evangelist began to pray. What followed was nearly a year of praying and fasting in preparation for the gospel assault on Malawu. Many tried to discourage them. Some of Dennis's friends begged him not to go, saying he was going into a death trap. But Dennis fixed his heart on the Lord and not his fears. And just over a year ago, they came up the mountain in faith. What they found was amazing. 
they were received by the elders who heard their witness for Christ and declared to them, our hearts and hands are open to you, even if you want to build a church here. When the village people heard that, they were so happy, they began to dance with joy that they could have a place to worship the true God. They circle the hilltop with joyful dancing and singing. I had heard about this Malawu miracle from Dennis, but I was still not prepared for what I saw when I reached the summit. There before me was the cross. The church building now stands on ground once dedicated to Satan. A Christian lady named Kruba Dedi was the first to greet us. The marks of her transformed life could be seen on her beautiful countenance, by her beautiful dress, and by shoes on her feet. Now she is a free woman, walking over the ground that Satan long ago usurped, but has now been reclaimed for Christ. These people were never meant to worship demons, were never meant for prison. They were made in God's image, and Christ has rescued and redeemed them. In just over a year, the high altar where animal and human sacrifice was made has been overturned, and half the village has turned from darkness to light. And the light shines in their faces, for they are now sons and daughters of the King. We travel to worship with a brand new band of believers, meeting in a little mud and stick church building in the Gola village of Yomastown. Out here in the bush, there's about an 80% illiteracy rate. So the pastors emphasize systematic Bible story teaching, working through the scripture chronologically, along with an open exchange of questions to deepen the people's understanding of the unfolding story from creation to Christ. Their songs joyfully reflect these great Bible stories, like Miriam and her companions did after crossing the Red Sea, when they danced and sang and took up tambourines. Only here among the Gola, they take up a gourd rattle called a sasa. One of the women played this rattle, and the only other instruments were our hands and feet. We stirred up quite a bit of dust. My favorite song was called The Horn of Jericho. In Gola, they sang of how the Lord brought the walls of Jericho down. It was fun to mime the horn and remember such a victory. And though we are from such different worlds, beneath the cross, we're one by the grace of God. <laughs>